the reason why we are talking so much about regulation is with AI, we've not really seen the full extent of the possibilities here. This is just the beginning. We cannot have the old game plan of big companies speaking to powerful politicians and colluding to make some kind of um, regulation that benefits either just politicians or industry. I think it's really important when we speak about regulation and regulation of AI and news in particular, um, it's important to think about what problem are we trying to solve and how can regulation help and what what is the outcome that we want and what are the behaviours we want to incentivise. When it comes to repressive states, then there is a tendency for them to latch onto the idea of regulation as a way of closing down anything they don't like, rather than, you know, in good faith trying to um, defend rights and, and uh, freedoms. And it's really important to, for us to bring in voices from the Global South, not just as consultation, but actually to be there at the table making decisions about how regulation and governance works and hearing from people in different environments, what are the different types of opportunities and risks that AI presents to them. If instead we saw the industry take leadership and create conversations where they're engaging with the public, they're engaging with civil society and representative groups, and they are producing their own codes of conduct, uh, they are showing that they can self-police and self-organise for the public good, um, I think that is the conversation of tomorrow that would give me confidence we would be taking the right steps towards regulation. It was really interesting because people normally talk about regulation as being restrictive. But it was very interesting here that actually there are beneficiaries in regulation. And if you don't strike the right balance, they may not be the ones that you wanted to. And that's you know, the issue of unintended consequences of, of regulation.